To build an API is a great way to learn any language quickly in my opinion. We're going to take a look at how to use Cowboy Plug and Elixir to create our very own API. This API will be hosted over HTTP and all of the responses and requests will be done via JSON. We'll integrate our API with third-party APIs and we'll even create some gen servers, so let's get to it. The first thing of course is to create our project. We do mix new and the project name, gas underscore station, but this time we're going to add dash dash sup and this creates our application using a different template. It's called a supervised application. This feature comes built into Elixir and OTP. It means if our API ever crashes, it will be brought back online. Once you've set up the project, we can go navigate to the mix.exs file and we can add our dependencies at the bottom. We're going to use three packages for this Elixir project. The first one is HTG Poison. This is going to allow us to connect to third-party APIs. It's a REST client for Elixir. The next one is called Poison. This is a JSON encoder and decoder. And lastly is Plug Cowboy. This is going to act as our HTTP server that communicates between Elixir and our web browser. Once you've saved these changes, you can go back to your terminal and type mixdeps.get, and this will install all of the packages we just defined. Next, we want to set up our router, and we'll do that inside of gasstation.ex. Per convention, we can add .endpoint to the end of the module name. This is going to tell everyone that this is our router file. We then add use plug.router. This turns our module into a router that cowboy plug understands. And then we need to paste in some plugs to make our HTTP requests work. You won't have to worry about these too much. They're copied and pasted straight from the documentation. Now we can define our first endpoint by using the get keyword provided by plug.router. Following this, we place the path as a string and then the do keyword. And then inside of this block is where our API response will go. We'll come back to this endpoint in a second. Let's first check out the 404 responses. To do this, we use the match underscore, which is going to match everything else. So anything that hasn't been matched above will be matched here. And then we can respond to unmatched requests with a 404 response. Going back to our get endpoint, let's add a path for slash gas slash ETH. This will return the estimated gas fees for Ethereum. First, we're doing what's known as pattern matching in Elixir, where we have a tuple that contains two elements. The first one, by convention, is an atom of OK or an atom of error. And so we're expecting an atom of OK and then the gas info to be the second value in this tuple. If this pattern match fails, the request will also fail. You'll get a 500 response error on the client. This tuple is coming from the eth.get function, and we will define that in just a moment. The next line is the send response. You can see that there's a connection. And then we have the status code, which is 200 to indicate a success. And then poison.encode is going to transform our Elixir data into a JSON string. What's important to take away here is that gas info is now a variable that we can use, but it will only be set if the OK atom is the first value in this tuple. What's also important to note is that the send response and connection keywords are coming from plug. I think now's a good time to talk about gen servers. We are going to be using gen servers to handle asynchronous requests to our third-party APIs. We'll then take that data and transform it and then use it for our own endpoints. Gen servers are useful because as you may have noticed, Elixir is an immutable programming language. So without gen servers, managing state or passing data between modules would be very difficult. Our gen servers will only be managing two pieces of data. The first one is last updated and the next one is last response. This is going to allow us to create a cheap cache, so between our own API requests, we won't be sending third-party API requests for every single one. Only once every 30 seconds do we want to send a new request to our third parties. This will help us avoid rate limits, and I think it's a good demonstration of what gen servers are useful for. In one sentence, gen servers are state machines that can handle synchronous or asynchronous requests. For our example, we're going to create two gen servers. We can go ahead and create them inside of our lib folder. We can create a new folder called fetchers, and inside of there, we'll create one for eth.ex and another for polygon.ex. Inside of the eth.ex file, we're going to define the module. Then we're going to use gen server. This turns the entire module into a gen server. This means that we'll have special callback functions that need to be defined in order for our gen server to work. The first callback function is an init function. You can pass an init arg whenever you're initializing the gen server. It expects a return of OK and the initial state. The next function we're going to create is start link. This is going to be used whenever we add our gen servers to the supervisor. It expects a return statement of our gen server link, and we can create that by using gen server dot start link. And then we can pass underscore underscore module underscore underscore. This is referencing the module we're currently working in. So in this case, gas station dot fetchers dot eth. After the comma is our initial state, last updated, we're going to set to zero. 
and last response, which is going to be set to nil. Then we can provide a name and we'll provide the module name as the name. Most of what we've talked about so far is boilerplate for gen server. Now let's talk about handle call. This is a callback function for fetching synchronous data from the gen server. Our first function is going to be identified with the atom fetch, and we're also going to pattern match the state for last updated. This function is going to check how old the data is, and if it's more than 30 seconds old, it's going to refetch the data from the third party APIs. As a return value, since we do want a response from this function, we have the atom reply, and then the second value is the actual reply response, and then the third value is the new updated state for the gen server. If it's been less than 30 seconds, we still want to respond to this function. So we have another reply that sends the last response stored in the state. And then we just return the state again because we don't need to update it this time. The last thing we're going to add is a helper function to call this handle call fetch. This is highly encouraged as it makes your gen servers much easier to use. This helper function is simply calling the fetch function we just defined. What's important to know here is that the underscore underscore module only works because we have the name defined in the start link function as well. We made reference to an API function which doesn't exist yet, api.eth.fetchResponse. We can create this function by creating a new folder under lib called API. Under API, we can create eth.ex and polygon.ex. This is where we'll create the API calls that will fetch the gas info. After creating our module, we're going to create what's known as a module attribute. This is just going to be a string with our API URL. Next, we're going to create the fetchResponse function. This is going to return data directly to our gen server. Using HTT poison and a case statement, we can easily check the output of a git request. We're only interested in two outcomes. The first one is the OK outcome. It comes with a response and a body. That body is going to be JSON data containing the gas information returned from Etherscan. If we decode that data, we can then transform it to fit our API. And that's what this parse Etherscan function is going to do. It's going to parse out the important numbers and then return them in a different format. In the event that HTT poison does not return the OK atom, it will reach our second condition. In this case, it will return the error atom, as well as the HTT poison response that might be there. There's one more thing we need to do before we can run this project. Let's move to application.ex. In the start function, we need to add two things to the children variable. The first is our eth gen server. The next is a configuration spec for plug cowboy. This is just going to configure our HTTP server. Make sure your settings are correct. We can now run the gas station application by using the IEX command we learned in the previous video. Once your shell is open, you can open a web browser and go to localhost 4000 slash gas slash eth. For the first request, you'll notice it takes a second, but if you refresh right after, it's instant. This is because of our cheap cache we created in the gen server. Congratulations, you should now have a working API. Let's keep adding to it. The obvious next step is to add polygon gas information. Let's copy and paste from the API eth.ex and paste it into polygon.ex. Make sure you change the module name, and then we'll update the API URL. Next, we'll replace parse etherscan with parse polygon. The rest of the code can remain the same because they're based on the same format. We could also copy and paste the gen server, but we can also do it a different way. We're going to create a macro that contains the functions that are shared between all the gen servers. To create this macro, under our fetchers folder, we're going to create a gas server.ex. After defining the module, we're then going to define the using macro. Within there, we use quote do, and then we paste all of the code that we want to be reused between the modules. After this, we need to go back to eth.ex and then make sure to use gas server. Once we've done this, we can remove all of the code that's been pasted in gas server. All that should really be left is our def handle call. Next, we can go to polygon.ex, be sure that our module is named correctly, and then we can use gas server. This time we can copy and paste the def handle call that we used before in eth.ex but this time replacing api.eth with api.polygon. We then need to go to gasstation.ex and update the router. We add a new git endpoint for slash gas slash polygon. We can use pretty much the same syntax, but replacing eth with polygon. One more thing, we need to head to application.ex and add it as a supervised module by adding gasstation.fetchers.polygon. This ensures that our gen server stays running in the background. After you refresh your Elixir shell, you should be able to access the slash gas slash polygon endpoint, and it should return the live data like we saw previously. I hope you learned something from this video. In the next few, we're going to take a look at Phoenix Framework, interacting with databases, WebSockets, as well as Phoenix Live Views. Stay tuned.